there's one very, very important aspect to, you know, making mashups and mixing in general. And that is the Camelot wheel. That is mixing in key. And I figured I'd address this and, you know, talk about it. I'll give you guys the scientific method. <laughs> I'll give you the scientific method. And then I'm also going to tell you guys how I do it. Okay. Which isn't exactly scientific. Scientific, whatever. Okay. Don't correct me. Mind your business. So this is how it works, generally speaking. Okay. And I'm going to break this down in layman's terms. Okay. Because again, this is very important. You don't want to not mix and key. Like you don't want to just disregard this. If you just disregard this altogether, if you just have key turned off and whatever DJ program you use and you don't look at key at all, it's a bad idea. Okay. Not mixing a key is going to have you basically something like this. To all the people. So you want to mix and key. Don't sleep on this. Mixing and key is very, very important. Okay. So this is the general rule. This is the scientific way. All right. The very science way. Let's say a song is 12A and this goes around the wheel. So this is like, uh, what do you call it? It repeats around the whole wheel. Okay. So we'll give you one example. It applies for everything around the whole wheel. Let's say you're mixing a 12A song. Well, if you're mixing a 12A song, you basically have four options if you want to stay perfectly in key, okay? Four options. Your four options are 11A, 12B, 1A, or stick with the same key, right? Or 12A, right? And we will call that mix money, right? That's for a money mix. Every time you mix using the four around, right? The four including the three around and then the fourth being the same key. If you just, you know, match the exact thing, obviously, that is going to be a money mix. You don't have to worry about shit how I mix personally. And this isn't scientific, okay? It works most of the time. Most of the time. You still have to use your ears. Still listen to what you're doing. Bring it up in the headphones. See if it sounds good together. Try and like, you know what I mean? Picture the two songs together. Listen to them. You'll see if it sounds dissonant, right? If it sounds just like a little off. It's not always going to work, but generally speaking, because it's kind of ridiculous, like it's very hard to mix, when you can only go up through those three once, right? Like, like that's very hard to do. This is what I do. I essentially do these all the way around, okay? I go up. If I'm at 12A, I'll go up to 3A. I'll stay in the green, okay? And I'll go down as far as 10A, generally speaking. So when I'm mixing live, I'm trying to figure out what to play next, I generally try and keep myself within this realm right here. Now, you're probably wondering why I don't go back as far counterclockwise as I do clockwise, right? So clockwise, 12A goes all the way up to 3A, but if you go backwards, I only go down to 10A. And that's because the direction you go on the wheel builds energy. I try not to drop down too far to the left. I try not to mix it all going counterclockwise around the wheel, but if I do, I only go down one or two, no more than that. It's just like BPM too, okay? With BPM, you constantly want to build energy. So when I mix, and I'm assuming when you mix too, when most DJs mix, there's exceptions always, but generally speaking, let's say you start out your set at 100 BPMs, you're going to move up to 105, 110, 115, eventually get yourself up to 120, then you're going to go up to 128 BPM, right? Then you want to get up to like the 140-ish BPM, then you want to bring it back down to 70 BPM, you cut it in half, right? And then from 70, you go up to 80 and 90, and then back to 100, and then you complete the circle, right? So you're going clockwise around the circle clockwise now the reason why you do that and you don't really go in reverse in most cases is because if you go in reverse you're bringing the bpm down as you go down so you're decreasing energy it's the same exact thing for the camelot wheel with the camelot wheel if you start at 12a you generally want to go to 1a 2a 3a and go around that way in a clockwise fashion because you're going to build energy that way if you go opposite and you go from 12a to 11 to 10 and you go down counterclockwise around the wheel, you're going to lose energy. The wheel was designed this way. 
I don't know exactly why, to be honest with you. You know, I know like the A is minor and the B is major. And they, they also say like, I got to tell you the rule. Like they also say you don't want to go from an A to a B or a B to an A more than one hour, one time, one hour. You know, every, every you don't want to do that more than one time in an hour because you're changing from a minor to a major key. I disagree with all those rules. I think you can break those rules. Just use your, use your heart, man. Just mix with your heart, mix with your ears. Just listen. If it sounds good to you, do what you got to do. But generally speaking, I stay within this range and then I try and move around the Camelot wheel in a clockwise fashion. Okay. Unless I have to make an emergency switch, unless I play a song and it's like, oh my God, this bombed bad. And I got to jump from 2B to 8A or something. And I got to make an egregious switch to save the whole day. Okay. Then obviously you got to jump off these rules. But generally speaking, I go in a, a clockwise motion. So I go all the way around that wheel that way. And I stay within these boundaries. And I think if you just do that, which is, if this isn't too hard to do, you know, I'm really stretching it here. I'm really stretching it here, but this gives me a lot more options. So I can stay, so I can still generally mix in key for the most part. Obviously, if the song, if I'm playing a 12A song and a 1A song would work great, I'm going to, that's my first choice, but I'm not going to shy away from a 3A song if it's a better choice of an overall song. Does that make sense? This is just how I work it in my head. You can call me wrong all you want. If you think I'm wrong, battle me. <laughs> but this is just how I, I basically figure it out. You know, this is how basically I, I do it. I use those, that, those guidelines and I always go clockwise to increase energy. And that's the best advice I can give you for the Camelot wheel. But definitely don't, don't not use it, especially if you're doing mashups, everything. If you're mixing in general, it, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't mean if you do, even if you don't even beat mix, if you're just blending one song into another, use the Camelot wheel. It's going to sound better overall. It does make a difference. Trust me.